गुड इवनिंग ऑल थैंक यू एवरीबडी वॉज सो साइलेंट आई थॉट इट वॉज नॉट ए गुड इवनिंग डोंट क्रिएट डाउट्स इन माई माइंड आई हैव टेकन ट्रबल ऑफ कमिंग ऑल द वे फ्रॉम बॉम्बे एट माई फ्रेंड्स इन्विटेशन ही हैज गिवन अ लॉन्ग इंट्रोडक्शन चेयरमैन एंड ऑल दिस बट आई हैव बीन अ स्टार्टअप मैन ऑल माई लाइफ my several startups part of the large business houses the first startup actually was in mobility not many here may know my role in mobile telephony whether it was first sms message on which entire aadhar identification is based whether it was first prepaid not in india but in asia which became the first wallet mobile wallet or it was the first photo transfer from a mobile to mobile it has been great fun from 2g to 3g by that time the companies both the companies where i was first employee had become multi billion dollar companies time to move to another startup and that is when i thought startup in another large business house will make sense defense aerospace agri scope for so many startups let me begin first by mentioning my other role as president of society of indian defense manufacturer we work very closely with startups in fact there are two initiatives which are helped by sidm of which i am president one is idex innovation for defense excellence which has been initiated by government of india ministry of defense and we have worked with hundreds of startups in the space startups is where innovations happen they develop niche technology and that is what enables large companies to improve products build products and offer products same thing is true for another initiative called sidm champions startups who come up with new products new services new technologies which can be utilized in defense and aerospace ecosystem we work again closely with them today i would like to talk about what have been the learnings from past industrial revolutions this is the one and how can we deploy them as we move forward to industry 4.0 and 5.0 first industrial revolution happened in the middle of 18th century at that time 25% of all exports from india done by east india company were textiles textile was the largest industry in the world india often you have heard accounted for 25% of the world gdp it came from textiles in a major way spices were there but textile was the major contributor t was not yet big in 100 years it dropped to 5% what happened steam engine happened steam engine based power looms came in manchester and cities around it lakhs of people weavers in india became unemployed within 100 years of course east india company was importing the cotton cotton textiles but that was the symptom what really happened to india was steam engine we talk about the symptom but we are forgetting the root cause if steam engine had not happened east india company could have done nothing before steam engine was invented 
once East India Company went bankrupt, and second East India Company was founded, but more about it later. Steam engine was born in a factory, not on a train. Train was an afterthought. We had, in Manchester, the textile mills, power looms, let's be honest. But they needed coal to produce steam. Coal had to be brought from a distance. And then they needed textiles to be exported out of UK. Now, they were still being done on sailing ships. That was the time people looked for what to do about transportation. It took 50 years before a steam engine left the factory and came to locomotive. Because of the weight, you needed rails. It could not move on roads. Steamers followed. What used to take months started happening in two weeks. And that is when cotton started going out of the colonies and textiles started coming. One whole industry in India was destroyed and a whole new industry was born, steam engine. Even if East India Company was not there, it would have happened. Mechanization was 500 times more efficient than manual labor. Steam engines kept getting better, more efficient, more smarter, better design, lighter weight. But that was not enough. Next disruption was on its way. Something was happening this time in Germany. Mr. Otto designed the auto engine. Mr. Diesel designed the diesel engine. And there was something, finally, which was going to end the era of steam engine. Learning is very important. Making things better, more efficient, is not invention, is not innovation. Please remember this. If you keep making a lantern better and better, you are not going to invent an electric bulb. A better lantern is still a lantern. Remember this, and this is something which we often forget. We think we are getting better. Internal combustion engine was lighter and efficient. It made it possible where steam engine could not go. As always, Many inventions of the world have been made possible by defense industry. Defense industry was first to see that if you used internal combustion engine, your vehicles could go where roads were not there. You could fly. You could put it on the submarines. Whole new gamut of products were born the base was only one simple internal combustion engine. There is a difference between invention, innovation, and improvement. They are three different words, and we have to be clear. Improvement is not innovation, and innovation is not invention. I talked of electric bulb. Electricity was tamed. Michael Faraday invented a generator which could produce electricity. He did not invent electricity. It was already there in the clouds. He found a way of making it on planet Earth. After that, imagination had no limits. So many electrical appliances were born, futile to try to name them. Actually, for the first 10 years, 80% of the cars were electric cars in the first decade of last century. Between 1900 and 1910, 80% of car produced were electric cars. So when we today talk about electrification, please remember all we are trying to do is what we did 110 years ago. But IC engine was 
easy to make. Fossil fuel was in plenty. Electric car, which was a better product, better for the planet, did not take off for one simple reason. Car was there, electric engine was there, but battery was too bulky. So joke was, if you want to travel within New York, buy an electric car. But if you want to go from New York to New Jersey, take a horse cart. Because horse you could feed on the way. A horse could have water and make water both on the way. Electric car could not because how do you charge the car? An invention needs ecosystem. And this is what I love about Thai and Matrix Forum. Trying to create an ecosystem where startups, corporates, developers, inventors, financiers come together. And that's what I love about this forum. And that is what, when I was told about, I have known about it long, I said, yes, certainly I would love to interact with my friends there. But so far, if you see industrial revolution, you see IC engine and electrical devices. All they did was improve the physical attributes, physical capabilities of men, women included. We could travel faster than any animal on Earth. We could even fly. We could have light without lighting a fire. You did not need lanterns, candles. Our voice could travel over long distance, thanks to Graham Bell, even on radio. Technological enhancements were only helping our physical attributes. Mental attributes so far have not been helped. It had to wait for the third revolution. Again, we have to say a big thank you to Second World War. There was a need for encryption and then decoding encryption, secret message transmission, and decoding the secret messages. It required that what our brain could do in one year, and by that time, the enemy could change the algorithm of a secret messaging. You needed something to be done in 24 hours. And that needed mental capability, the brain power to be augmented. This is the revolution which talked coming into the brain. So far, it was about making our hands and legs move faster, lift more heavy weight, go longer distance. But now is the time technology is talking about improving, supplementing, adding to what brain could do by itself. I won't talk about it. All of you perhaps know more technology than me. Mobile phones, of course, I know. I came up to 3G. We'll talk about 5G later. Up to 3G, I was deeply involved in the development of the industry. There is another thing which we often forgotten is storage. You could communicate faster thanks to communication technology. You could also process it faster thanks to commutation power. But automation was not possible till the time you had developed storage. In previous revolution, I talked about battery storage not being there. So electric cars, even though they accounted for 80% of the cars on Earth in 1910, were replaced by AC engine because petrol could be stored. Automation did not happen till the time we had information storage. Faster processing and faster communication did not create automation. It had to wait when storage was possible. So you could write commands, if this, then this, if this, then this, if this, then this, and automation was there. Of course, Western world, Japan, they adopted it first. It did not take off that well in India. Why? Just because it is better doesn't mean it will be successful. 
I'm repeating this point again and again. Better does not make you successful. Cost-benefit analysis does. Better gives you the satisfaction that I have a better product, I did it. You may get a patent also on it. But will it be commercially successful? VHS was successful, Blu-ray was not. I'm talking long time back. Blu-ray was so much better technology. But they made certain mistakes. That may be a subject of another wonderful discussion. So automation happened. Now we had moved from industrial age to information age. Information age required three key elements, each one equally important. Software technology first and foremost. Efficient transmission was second. And then, of course, the storage of information. Without that, it would not have been possible. But so far, what is missing? Now the machines are helping human brain, whereas first two revolutions were helping our hands and legs and eyes. Human brain is being helped now, but it is still dependent upon brain writing code and giving instructions. It is still brain is giving instructions, though it is able to do it faster and more detailed and more comprehensive way. And that is where Industry 4.0 arrived. That is the time I left telecom and IT industry. Now we often refer to two as cyber physical systems. Almost everything is interconnected. It is difficult to say what begins where. But one thing there is no doubt, whether it is simulation, whether it's internet of things, whether it's cloud computing, whether it's cybersecurity, all of them ultimately, the final product is actually, as of today, autonomous robots. They are considered the pinnacle of technological success for the people at large, for society. What has gone into them, it may not be always understood. But pinnacle of technology development of cyber physical system is autonomous robots, or even when AI is answering your question, at the back of the mind, 99% people think there's a robot sitting there who is answering it. This is common misconception. But it does exist. We can't wish it away. I am going to share only two use cases from 5G. I know there are experts sitting here. And I also know that in this forum, 5G use cases are being discussed. I am speaking from experience of our automotive sector. Paint defect identification is always a challenge. If there is a defect and a car gets dispatched, it will come back from dealership, transport cost coming back, and then you repair the defect. Paint might have a blemish, a, you know, a blotch, a spot. How do we make sure, and human eye may not always be able to detect. This is where online paint defect identification and repair uh, mitigation has become very important. Painted, painted vehicle cloth goes through this cycle, and it is 5G which identifies it quickly. Algorithm is there cloud-based. It is quickly transmitted. Operator knows where is a defect, and it gets taken care of. If you have a, thousands of cars parked, and you have to look for one particular car of a one particular specs, blue color, automatic, four, four gear, whatever, that can be easily done once again with this 5G application. I will not go into detail. All of you perhaps know more. I'm just sharing. That's one use case. 
This was age of thinking machines. Human brain function slowly getting outsourced to algorithms. Role of humans had begun to shrink as automation and AI taking over. People start worrying, shouldn't humans and their needs drive their progress in technology? And that is where 5.0 is what we talk today. I have been chairman of the Sustainability Council, Group Council, for all 100 companies of Mahindra Group. Sustainability is a subject which is driving attention span, thought process for all of us today. A lot has been spoken by the first speaker on this subject. I don't believe in duplication. I'm going to skip it and move straight away to the summary that today, while technology has been the driving force in one, two, three, four, the industry 5.0 is going to focus on people being at the center of it. Planet and people will drive tech industry 5.0. Learnings are simple. Change is the only constant. Nothing will stay permanent. Don't be a dinosaur. Keep close watch on technology trends. What you are doing today may be fantastic, but it takes only two or three years for that thing to go obsolete. More efficiency, certainly not innovation. Keep inventing and innovating. Either scale or specialize. You can't do both. Those who have tried to do both have often failed. Even best products will not succeed if cost-benefit analysis does not justify. Remember to pivot is very important. Change the problem definition if it is old definition is not solving or not achieving what you want to do. Change the problem definition. Do not hesitate. Don't stay attached to a dead baby, as they say about mother monkeys. They don't, they go on holding on to dead baby. Pivot as quickly as possible. Focus on long-term value. Do not worry about FOMO, fear of missing out. It just does not matter. That is a mistake many of us make. Technology is just a tool. Remember people. And lastly, keep impact on society and environment in mind. Don't forget them. Without them, sooner or later, subject will come back to haunt you, like IC engine is haunting us 100 years later through global warming. And watch out for next disruption. Thank you.